I'm going to ask you a question. For, this is only for the Christians, by the way. Just for the Christians. How many of you heard of the Ten Commandments? How many of you memorized all of them? Remember, you got them memorized. You're ready to sprout them off right now. Keep, what, what happened? <laughs> well, one of the Muslims is ready to do it. Hold on. I said Christians, remember? It surprises me how many times when I ask the Christians, what's the first commandment? They say, thou shalt not kill. Yeah. Did you know that's not the first commandment? The first commandment is, you can, you can take it out of chapter 20 in the book of Exodus if you want to, but it's actually twice in uh, the Bible, Old Testament. But something like this, depending on which translation you have. I'm the Lord your God that brought you out of the land of Egypt in the house of bondage. You know no other God beside me. Beside me there's no other God. Then comes, thou shalt not have any other gods beside me. Is that number one or not? Now you remember, right? What's the second one? Thou shalt not kill. Nope. Second one says, Thou shalt not make unto me any graven image. Then it goes on to tell you what images not to make. Of anything that creeps on the earth, swims in the sea beneath, or flies in the air above. One time I was sitting in church reading that. The preacher was talking about something else. But I was reading that and I looked up. And I was shocked. Because he said, not of anything that's walking on the earth. And there was Jesus right there, a statue. I said, whoops. Then I looked on the front of the pulpit. And there was a fish. You know that one, fishers of men? And this is something in the sea beneath. Then I looked up at the big stained glass window and they had a dove up there. I said, man, they didn't miss anything. They got it all. Says it. No images. Of course, people tell you, we don't worship that. What's the third one? Thou shalt not kill. Nope. No, the third one says that you will not take the Lord your God's name in vain. Mm, yeah, that's right. By the way, Muslims really abhor the idea of anybody using God's name in a bad way at all. We just wouldn't think of it. In fact, we use it in a very positive way. We say someone is a slave to God. He says, Abdullah. Abdullah means the servant of Almighty God. Next commandment, fourth commandment. Ah, thou shalt not kill. Nope, not yet. Now it talks about your parents. To honor your parents. By the way, this is just exactly the way they come in the Quran. The same commandments come the same way, even to the extent to tell you that if either one or both of them grow old during your life, that you're supposed to do what? To give them full service without even saying, oof, while you're taking care of them. Number five, thou shalt not kill? Yeah, there it is. Now you got it. But look at the value that we're talking about here. This is what Islam is about. These exact things that we're teaching of course thou shalt not kill that you won't bear false witness that you won't commit adultery that you won't uh, cheat you're not going to be involved in lying and cheating you're not going to get uh, uh, covetousness jealousy don't have jealousy it's called hasid in the Arabic language all of these things are mentioned in the Quran this is Islam it's not a new religion in fact, it's a going back to the religion of Abraham and Moses and the prophets before. It's going back all the way to the religion of Adam himself. So this now explains the origin of Islam. Because as long as there was a creation and the creation has to do what God wants it to do, the creation itself is doing Islam, surrendering to God. By the way, do you know how to say the pronoun for this? The one, the one who is performing this verb, the one who performs the verb, the noun of this, the performer of this. How do you say it? Do you know? Mu Islam. Instead of putting er after the verb in Arabic, you put mu in front of it. Walk, talk, think. Huh? Walker, talker, thinker. And in Arabic, you put mu in front of the verb. Salli, mu salli, suffer, mu suffer. 
Adan, Mu'adan, Islam, Muslim. Whoever does Islam becomes Muslim. So technically, technically, if you believe there's only one God and you want to do what he wants you to do, you're trying your best according to what you know. According to the Arabic language, you're a Muslim. Islam teaches us that every single child, regardless of the religion of the parents, the child is born in the state of Islam. Any child that dies automatically goes to paradise. That's the teaching of Islam. Not born in any original sin, born innocent as a newborn babe. This is the teaching of Islam. All of the children go to paradise. Such is the kingdom of heaven. Where did you hear that before? Who said that? You remember? Suffer the children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Is it in your Bible? Or did somebody take it out since I had my Bible? Huh? No, it's still there, isn't it? The reason I'm sharing this with you in this manner is I want you to think how much of what I said, how much of what I said today sounds like what you already believe. And if it's pretty close, then where's the real problem? Who's benefiting out of this thing? Who, who is making some gain out of this? Who are these people doing these things and why? It's definitely there's two sides out there. We're hearing about it. I hear about it when I'm in other countries. I hear about how horrible the Americans are and what all they do. And when I'm over here, I'm hearing about what Arabs and how awful they are or people from Afghanistan, how awful they are. But when I'm over there, I'm seeing the same thing that I'm seeing right here. I'm seeing good human beings who are concerned about what's happening to us and to our children and to our future. While a very few people are making an awful lot of gain out of what's happening in the world. That took longer than I wanted to take, actually, but I wanted to break it down for you because sometimes the questions that I get or about the subject that I just talked about. I don't want to leave off the stage to tell you one more thing. Our brother who came up here on the podium a little earlier and wrote, read the Quran to you, he's memorized the entire Quran. You heard that mentioned. But Quran doesn't mean a book. There are some bad translations, by the way, of Arabic to the English and some of them we Muslims are guilty of leaving them there because we just don't know any better or don't have a better idea but the first first of all the words that came in the Arabic language is Iqara unfortunately everybody that I know minus one percent says it means read and it doesn't I'll give you the easy proof for that because it, it refers to the same word as Quran and he is a Qari, and he, that doesn't mean he's a reader, it means he's a reciter. And Quran is recitation, and the word means recite. And the response for the, for the Muslims, is talking to the Muslims right now, the response of Rasulullah was what? La anabi Qari. He said, I'm not a reciter. He didn't mean that he doesn't know how. He said, I don't recite. Because people recited a lot at his time, but anyway. It is the recitation. And that which is being recited is something amazing. When you consider that today we do not have the original of the Old or the New Testament or the Psalms. We don't. We have some very old documents. But nobody could swear, hey, Moses actually penned this right here. Because we, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Nor that Jesus did either. Peace be upon them. The Qur'an wasn't written down by Muhammad, peace be upon him. Although he had companions that did write it down. But what he did, he heard it, memorized it, recited it, and passed it on to generation after generation after generation. And it has never, ever found any deficiency. It's still recited today as it was recited then. And today we have more than two billion people reciting parts of it, exactly because they've memorized that, and we have over 10 to 20 million who memorize the whole entire thing. That in itself should cause you to want to at least get a copy of it in the English so that you can read and find out about it. 